What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do in today's video is take a look at Bitcoin. We finally got over that $70,000 hump today. And so I wanna look at where we're at right now in the market and what we might expect going forward. So first of all, I wanna say congratulations to everyone who's stuck it out over the last two years where we've seen honestly a lot of difficult times. So we had to battle the SEC, we had to deal with all of the things related to FTX, Three Arrows Capital, you know, all of that stuff, Terra Luna back in 2022. But here we are, we're sitting here on March 8th of 2024. And for those of you who have been watching this channel, for those of you who have taken to heart the process, the things that I've discussed over the last two years where I've been advocating relentlessly that as the market declines, using something like the DCA index risk model, using something like the UDPI risk model, using those to guide your purchases as we descend in the bear market, buying during those times, decreasing your cost basis, increasing the amount that you're buying as the market descends. That's how you're ultimately going to make the type of profits that everyone talks about in the crypto market. And for those of you who have taken that advice to heart, you're now reaping the rewards. So congratulations, everyone. So today we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, but what I wanna quickly show you is this here. This is a model that I've created, which helps us to identify where the altcoin market may eventually end up. So you hear a lot of people talking about this coin or that coin and what its potential might be, but ultimately they don't really have a method for justifying their claims. So what I've done is created a model which helps us to identify where the overall market cycle very likely could end up at for the altcoin market specifically, and then we can take that and take it a step further and apply it to individual altcoins in order to determine where they may end up in this market cycle. So giving us a mathematical, a model-based and data-based approach to analyzing the altcoin market, which is something that ultimately a lot of people aren't doing out there. And so basically they're just taking blind stabs at numbers, numbers that don't necessarily mean anything. So we've created a machine learning model in order to gauge where this altcoin market may end up and therefore where various altcoins can end up. So I'll probably release that video either tonight or early tomorrow morning. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just quickly look at where we're sitting at right now. I think everyone knows we're right at around $70,000 at the moment. We, I think we've corrected off a bit and we're actually sitting down closer to 68, 69K. And that's actually something I wanna talk about in this video. We're gonna start by looking at this. We're looking at the Bitcoin logarithmic regression curve. We're essentially using a combination of the price and the realized price of Bitcoin in order to create these two zones, essentially a buying zone down here in the green and a selling zone. So just quickly to look back at the buying zone, how this works. This is showing us down here, once you're in these green zones, these are the best times to be buying Bitcoin typically. And you'll notice that each time we get down into this green zone, that's essentially at the level of your market cycle bottom. And remember this model was created well before uh, this bear market. We were looking at this back in the bull market phase of the cycle. Uh, you know, we had this constructed model and this is basically telling us where the model believed that the price could get down to in the depths of a bear market. And if you look here, you'll notice that we came right down to the bottom of this curve. And that's exactly where the bottom occurred at. So, you know, this model that we created, it was basically spot on for identifying where the bear market bottomed out at, right? And it's been, you know, pretty accurate in that regard in each cycle. But in this cycle in particular, it basically essentially nailed the bottom exactly. And remember, you know, we made this back here at the end of 2021. So these lines already existed on this chart prior to this bear market portion of the cycle. So this wasn't something that we kind of cherry picked that we adjusted the data in order to fit where the price ended up going. This was a model that you could have been looking at in order to gauge when we were finally approaching that market cycle bottom. So what I wanna draw your attention to now is where we're sitting at. We are right in this no man's land, right? We're right in this zone where we've ascended out of this buying portion of the cycle. And we've broken out of that right here at around 50K. If we look at this, this is kind of telling us where this model believes that the cycle could end up at 
and we give ourselves a range of error here, right? Because we don't necessarily know exactly where the top will occur. And we'll look at this in a bunch of different ways in the coming weeks. But right now, just using this model alone, we can get some idea of where we could see this market cycle top out at. So let's take a look at where we're at now. Now, first things first, I want to show you with this regression model, which uh, you know you can get on TradingView actually. With this regression model, it can predict into the future. So if you want to look forward, all you do is you come into the inputs here and you select how many days into the future you wanted to look at. So let's say we were gonna look, it's defaulted to 250. Let's say we thought the market cycle was going to top out, not this year, but sometime next year, 500 days in the future. So this line will extend out then, and it will give you an idea of where a market cycle bottom could occur at if it happened in 2025 or where a market cycle top would occur at if it were to happen in 2025. And so you see that there's a time-based component to where the price is at at any given time, right? So a regression model such that we've done here, and we actually have multiple different types of regression models for Bitcoin. This is a time-based regression model. So its input is time and it's looking at the price only with respect to time, okay? And so this says that if we were to extend out, like let's say the market cycle top occurred today. Let's start there. If it occurred today, suddenly we were go to go up to a potential market cycle top. This model thinks it could occur somewhere between around 180K and around 100K. All right, it's a wide range, right? But you know that's kind of the type of range we have to give ourselves when we're um, looking at something like this. So this is just giving us a very basic framework with which to judge where could the market cycle top occur at. But if we went out all the way out 500 days later to 2025, well, at that point, the model believes that the top could occur somewhere between 146K and all the way up to around 300K, so 282K. So you'll notice that as time goes on, both your expected market cycle bottom level and your market cycle top level are going to increase. So they're going to be increasing with respect to time. So let's take a look then if the market cycle top were to occur kind of in December or you know November, December, January of 2024 into 2025. So let's just see what that could yield us based on the predictions of the logarithmic regression curve from where we're at right now. And currently we're sitting somewhere at around 68K so if we were to top out out here at the end of 2024, it says, the model says that that would put us somewhere between 120K and 230K. And I tend to, you know, let's just kind of take the middle to the middle bottom portion of the range just to be conservative here. You know, if you're new to the channel, well, it's one thing that I think I'm known for is having more conservative more, uh, you know, predictions that are more based in reality. Um, I'm not one of these people that is going to constantly be claiming a million dollar Bitcoin. I'll tell you right now, that's not going to happen, not happening in this cycle. You know, I'm sure there's already people out there saying that. And those people are, you know, I'll stake my reputation on it. They're wrong. A million dollar Bitcoin will not happen this market cycle. Okay. But that doesn't mean that there aren't massive gains to be made in the crypto market. So we're going to be conservative, you know, keeping with that, we're going to be conservative. So, you know, if we kind of stay in the bottom third of this range, that could put us all the way up to around 150 K. Okay. Now we could potentially go higher, but let's just say a hundred, somewhere between 120 to 150 were the market cycle top in this cycle. That still gives us 128% returns from where we're at right now. And that's kind of at the bottom of the range. Now, theoretically, we could go higher. But being conservative here, I think that's a, you know, a fair prediction. Now, if we go out further, let's say that we were to extend out to the middle of 2025, you could see us all the way up here. Then you're starting to look at numbers like, uh, you know, at 135K all the way up to around 175K. So the farther out that this market cycle drags on, the higher overall the price could potentially end up according to the logarithmic regression curve. Okay, so these models have overall been extremely accurate in identifying both 
potential locations for market cycle peaks and the locations for market cycle bottoms. So, you know, basically this just gives us a very basic framework for assessing where could the market cycle peak occur for Bitcoin. And guys, I'll just tell you right now, we're going to get into some much more advanced ways of looking at this. Um, but I just thought that this was a, you know, a very basic, a very understandable and a very relatable way to look at where we could potentially get to. But I quickly want to look at before we end this video is what might we expect now that we've hit that 70K level? And I think this is going to be important because what we tend to see in these bull markets is a lot of downside volatility, right? Obviously a lot of upside volatility, but there are a huge number of shakeouts. So I don't want people to, you know, repeatedly fall victim to those types of shakeouts. Now, ultimately guys, we could, you know, you could have very well believed that we were on our way to a new all time high back here in 2019. And some of this downside volatility ended up leading to, you know, nine months or so of massive downside, right? We went down 70% from th this peak where we were at back here in uh, June of 2019. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you definitively that we're not at one of those levels. But I think two things can be taken from this. Number one, you never know where we're at in the market cycle. Perhaps more importantly, if you got shaken out, then you essentially were probably also one of the people who started buying back in once the market really started to take off again, right? And very likely people tend to get shaken out at bottoms. They don't tend to get shaken out kind of like, you know, right around here at 10K or something. They tend to get shaken out at these levels like here at 7,800. Then they buy back in at 9,500. And then they sell again when they get down to 7,000, okay? So that's one thing to watch for. You know, consider what your time horizon is and use that to assess what you're going to do if there is downside from here, all right? The thing I wanna mention though is, let's suppose that we were using this log regression curve and this cycle did go on to top, you know, several months after this June um, portion of the rally that we had, right? Because we had this bottom down here at 3,200, then we rallied in 2019. Let's suppose that we did top at that point. Notice where we were at there. You would have seen the market cycle top at only 33K. So this perfectly demonstrates what we're talking about, where we say that the farther out the market cycle extends, the higher the price can go. And you saw that demonstrated perfectly here back in 2019. You know, if we would have, if we would have went to top somewhere out here at the end of 2019, you know, about six months after this June peak, we only would have been somewhere between 30 and up to maybe 40K. So because the cycle extended out further, the potential for the market top increased significantly. In fact, from this time right here in 2019, the model predicted that 30K was a market cycle top level. Whereas out here in April of 2021, it predicted that around 64, 65, up to around 66K was actually a market cycle peak level. All right. So, you know, that same thing applies to what we're looking at here going forward. So what we're doing here is we're just going to come back and look at the price of Bitcoin each time it's got back to its prior all time high on an exchange. OK, so this is kind of when Bitcoin first started uh, landing on exchanges. It was back all the way in 2020, uh, 2011. And I want to show you each time that we get to one of these prior all time highs. And I'll just turn the regression model off at this point. I want to show you what happened because I think this is particularly relevant right now. So it kind of launches on an exchange at around 12 bucks. We have this bear portion of the cycle, right? Then the market starts to recover. We go from around two bucks all the way up to 12 bucks. What happens right when we get back to this prior all time high level? So this metric down here on the bottom that I've created also available on TradingView. And if, by the way, guys, if you want to sign up for these TradingView scripts, you just have to go to the Discord and the links to subscribe to them are available on the Discord. So when we got back to this prior all-time high, we actually saw the price drop 37%, 40% or so. We saw the price go from 12 bucks and it dropped around 40%, okay? And the way that this script works, it's basically showing you 
where we're at right now with relation to an all-time high. So we made an all-time high right here. When you're at this zero level, that means you're at the all-time high, okay? So once we got up to that level, we hit the all-time high and it dropped down. And it shows that it dropped down uh, minus 0.4. So that's 40%. Minus 0.5 is minus 50%, et cetera. Minus 0.99 is down 99%, okay? So right when we got to that all-time high, we dropped uh, 40%, right? And you'll notice there was a lot of volatility right in this zone. When we got back to the all-time high here, you'll notice that we got back there again here. We hit that all-time high level and we dropped down again 25%. So there were two large volatility zones that both coincided right with hitting that prior all-time high. Now, let's look at what happened when we made this all-time high back here in, um, this is April of 2013. We hit this all-time high. When we got back to that level in October of 2013, what happened? We hit that level and we had this volatility zone, right? So we dropped again around 15%. Now this time it wasn't quite as severe, but it's just kind of building the picture of what happens when we get to these prior all-time highs. Back here in December of 2013, we hit an all-time high. You know, obviously we had this massive protracted bear market. As we go forward, let's look at what happened when we got back to that all-time high, right? Right when we got back to this all-time high, we went from a price of around 1100 all the way down to around 750. So we had a 30% drop. We got back to that all time high right here. We went above it for a bit. And then what happened? We had another 30% drop. So rolling forward, now we're in 2018, the end of 2017, we make this all time high at around 20K. Then what happened when we got back to that all time high right here? We had more volatility. We get back to the all time high, we had another you know, 11% drop. And these are closing prices. If you actually go from the price that we were at down to the wick, you know, that's a 16% drop. The drops, these massive uh, volatility segments are essentially just shakeouts. They're shaking out weak handed investors. And a lot of times, who does that tend to be? It tends to be the people who are at their first rodeo people that are new to crypto because if you're coming from the equities market you are not necessarily exposed to this type of volatility nothing even close to it and that's one thing i definitely you know one of the things on this channel that i try and do there's a couple key things number one i try and dispel patently false information people that are you know saying things like two million dollar bitcoin ten million dollar bitcoin whatever that type of information gets people destroyed in this market. Another is, you know, people either selling way too early or selling way too late, holding on because people keep telling them, hey, we're not at the end of the market cycle. There's more, you know, Bitcoin when we were back here at 60, whatever, 69K. Don't worry, we're going to 200K, 300K, 400K. That's, you know, not how these markets work. If you simply look at the market cap, it will often tell you, if you just think about it logically, it will often tell you, you know, that there's a lot of baseless information out there. You know, one of the key things I try and do here is help new investors understand the market from a very rational and realistic perspective. And the other is for more advanced investors, helping them to un understand the data and putting it all together in order to significantly improve their timing of investing into the market and getting out of the market when we're in times where the price is rallying up to unsustainable levels, okay? Continuing on, when we got to this 69K level back here in November of 2021, now we're sitting here at this prior all-time high. And you'll notice that what happened immediately upon getting to that level? Well, we had one of these extreme volatility zones already, a 14% drop. And, you know, that may not sound like a lot, but let's do one thing here. Let's look at, uh, let's take a look at the Bitcoin market cap, a 14% drop in Bitcoin. What exactly does that mean? A 14% drop in Bitcoin in a single day is equivalent to about $200 billion in lost, unrealized profit, okay? So that is a massive, massive swing in the price of Bitcoin when you consider the size of its market cap. A single day having a, you know, a complete swing of around 14% is huge. 
But what is it? It's all simply a way to shake out weaker hands. It shakes out those weaker holders. They get taken out of the market. They sell typically at a loss, right? Because a lot of those people are going to have bought right in here. They're going to be convinced that we were, you know, this was the top for whatever reason. They think that that was the top. And now we're on our way back down. And, you know, this is just our first one of those. This has actually been, you know, in terms of volatility, this has been an extraordinarily low volatility swing that we've seen since we've gone from a market cap of around $750 billion up to the 1.34 trillion that we're at right now. You know, we've essentially had very little downside volatility in this upswing until right here. But now that we're at that prior all time high, you know, based on everything I've showed you guys, you know, we know that once we get to these prior all time highs, like we made back here in November, where we hit a market cap of 1.3 trillion, these tend to be rather high volatility zones. So I expect, you know, this doesn't necessarily mean this will happen. And I'm not saying this to try and convince you to get out of the market, quite the opposite. I'm saying this because, and you know, this isn't financial advice, but I'm saying this because I believe we will see volatility here. And ultimately, I'll be looking at those as potentially being buying opportunities, depending on how severe the correction is. If you're new to the market, I'm expecting there to be volatility here. Um, you know, we could potentially see a rather large correction. You could see another 15, 20% correction. And I wouldn't be surprised by that for even a second. In fact, sometimes these swings can, you know, not necessarily just last a day like this last one did, right? They can sometimes last, you know, a week or two. Or as we go back here, like we saw back here in um, 2017, they can last even longer. You know, we didn't really get above this level that we saw back here in January until all the way out here in April. So this could, you know, we could potentially see volatility at this level that lasts for several months. But ultimately, I do think that it's only volatility. I do think that it's only a temporary uh, halt in the market, if we do even see that. And, you know, I do think that we're going to be, you know, in for a potentially great year. Now, what are some factors that could ultimately derail us from that? The stock market starts to tank. You can kiss it goodbye. You know, I, you know, there's a lot of discussion that, you know, we've uh, kind of dissociated from the stock market that, you know, there's uh, very low correlation. And I don't buy that for a second. I think there's high correlation between Bitcoin, especially as the market cap rises. When we're looking at a $1.3 trillion market cap, you can expect that there is a high degree of correlation between Bitcoin and the stock market. So as long as the stock market continues to see gains, as long as the economy continues rolling in 2024, I think you're going to continue to see this rally pressing forward. Um, but ultimately, as you guys know, if you are been around here for the last couple of years, I don't do any of my investing based on my personal beliefs. I do it based on what the data is telling me. So as long as all the different metrics that we use, as long as all of the data is telling me that we have continued upside from here, that you know I don't need to be panicking, I don't need to be panic selling, and which I would never do anyways, even if we crashed back down to 20K right now, I wouldn't be panic selling. I'd be going back into the acquisition mode, just like I did back in 2019, buying as the market corrected and selling when we get to the appropriate locations on the sell side. And how I do that, if you are unaware, I'll discuss that in a future video, probably upcoming this week as well. So guys, expect potential for volatility where we're at right now based on historical trends each time we get back to this prior all-time high. And even if, you know, not even looking at necessarily prior all-time highs, just take a look at this, this, this uh, peak level that we hit back here in 2019, right at around 12.5K, right, excluding the wicks. When we got back to that level, we had another correction, right? So these areas tend to be rather volatile. And if we just take a measure of this, you know, it was a 20% drop. And again, this lasted, if you kind of go from where we first hit this level, from August all the way out here until October. So these areas of volatility can potentially last for up to a couple months. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened right now. Now, 
like I said, I'm telling you this so that you don't get shaken out. I'm not telling you this because I'm telling you it's going to happen. I'm telling you that if it does happen, be prepared for it. The more prepared you are for all eventualities, the better you're going to do in the crypto market. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Until next time, as usual, see you.